good to see you again this morning. I want to thank God for your, uh, for your life. Thank you for joining in thy presence. I want to thank God for your life. I want to thank God you are alive, you are well, you are on your feet again. God has given you a new list of life and another opportunity to see another day. Kindly tell your friends and family to join us on this platform and also to subscribe at that anytime we are on, encourage them to switch on their notification because that also will help them to connect with us easily without waiting for you. So always encourage them to switch on their notification. Praise be the name of the Lord again this morning. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for our media team. We want to thank God for our worship team. We want to thank God for our wonderful sister as well that is helping with interpretation so that this message can go far. Quickly, before we go on this morning, I want you to share this message. I want you to share this platform. I want you to share this program. I want you to go ahead and share this morning. Just go ahead, just go ahead. If truly you are sure that God is great, I want you to go ahead and share to somebody this morning again. After this service, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to share the good news. Be part of the people that are carriers of good news. I want to say that again. Be part of the people that are carriers of good news. I want you to say to yourself this morning, I am a carrier of good news. I want you to say it again. I am a carrier of good news. I want you to say it again. I am a carrier of good news. If truly indeed you are a carrier of good news, I want you to start sharing this message. I want you to start sharing. I want you to start sharing to your loved one, to your auntie, to your uncle, to your brother, to your sons, to your daughters. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want us to quickly do that. I want you to quickly do that. I give you two more minutes, two more minutes. I'm waiting for you to pick up your phone and share this message. And after this service, I want you to share it again. I want you to share it again and again and again and again. The Lord bless you, wonderful people of God. How are you doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go again this morning. How are you doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go one more time. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our head for prayer. Heavenly Lord, we want to thank you for great privilege, opportunity you have given to us again this morning. We are able to wake up. We are able to stand on our feet. We are able to move around again. We give you praise. We give you worship. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for your covenant because we know that you are a covenant keeper. Thank you for upholding us. Thank you for fighting our battles. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for not leaving us. Thank you for not forsaking us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your angels that you have surrounded us during the night hours. We give you praise, Daddy. We worship you. We exalt you. We adore you. We glorify. We magnify. We enthrone. We bless you. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for this program in that presence. Thank you for testimonies and testimony that is coming through this program. Thank you for life that you are touching. Thank you for homes that you are building. Thank you for encouragement to your people. Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all adoration. Lord, we worship your majesty in the beauty of your holiness. We return the glory back to you, O God. Thank you for what you do as well in the power of prayer, God of breakthrough in our services. We return the glory back to you. All the honor and adoration. Take our glory again. Take the honor again. This morning again. Only for you, our Father. Because it's you that have done it. As we continue in this service and this program, we ask, oh God, that you will lead, you will direct. We ask, oh God, that you will speak, you will minister to people individually, collectively. You will give us a hearing here and ask to follow you and to follow instruction. In the mighty name of Jesus. Take the prayer minutes, oh God. Take over the airspace that nothing stops us, that nothing hinders us. Shield us by your fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. 
Lord, we worship you. And again, this morning, I lift up this prayer request, oh God, before you, page by page, one by one, individual needs. I pray, oh Lord, that you will touch and meet the needs of your people. As I lift up this request before you, our maker, as I lift up this request before you, our deliverer, as I lift up this request before you, the giver of life, I ask this morning, page to page, because your eyes can see to and through. You will read this request. You will minister to your people. Lord, I ask great testimony to come out of all this request again this morning as we lay it before you, as we put it before our Father, as we put it before our Maker. You will go through the pages. You will meet the individuals. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord God. You will do a new thing in their situation. In the name of Jesus, you will bring glory to your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The great testimonies will come out of this prayer request. And we return back the glory, honor, and adoration to our King and our Father. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And the saints of God will say, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's quickly go to the Word of God. Yesterday, we were talking about renewing our, uh, our mind. Uh, uh, walking by faith and not by sight. I believe that was the topic for yesterday. So this morning, I want to talk to us about renewing our mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Romans 12, and I will be reading from 1 to 2. I want to quickly repeat that again. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, my, by message of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your heart, that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, and perfect will of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. You can only change your life by renewing your mind. I want you to come with me again this morning. Because I know with the word of God, remember, I will not just go into prayer. I will have to lay down with foundation and we will build in it by praying. I say you can only change your life by renewing your life, by renewing your mind. I say it again one more time. You can only change your life by renewing your mind. If your mind is not renewed, your life cannot be renewed. Paul, the apostle, pleaded with the Romans. He said, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God. In this scripture, Paul wrote a letter to the Romans. And the Romans here are Christians. It was, they were not sinners. That he was asking that by the mercy of God, for you to prove what is acceptable and perfect will of God, your mind must be renewed. I go back again. For you to prove what is acceptable and perfect will of God, your mind must be renewed. One of the greatest problems that believers have is that their mind is not renewed. Yes, you have given your life to Christ, but you have given your life to Christ, but your mind is not renewed. And it's the same thing that is happening that happened here with the Romans. They have given their life to Christ, but their mind was not renewed. Let's look at the book of Romans 1 and verse 7 again. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. So you know that the letter was not written to people that are not Christians. This letter was written to people that are Christian. Here it shows that the people we are Christian because Paul the Apostle says in the book of Romans 1 and verse 7, said to all in Rome, beloved, beloved, called to be saints. So they are called to be saints. Hallelujah. So this letter is written to men and to women who are born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. And that is why it said to the, to the beloved that is called by, by, that is called saints. But hear this. They were Christians, but they, they, they were Christians. They do nothing about their bodies and about their mind. And that is why Paul the Apostle is saying that they have to renew, present them, their body to Christ and they have to renew their mind. I want to say that again. The Christians, they did nothing. They did nothing. 
with their body and with their mind. So it's like they, they, they believe by mouth. They have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. But here it is. It's shocking that their mind and their body is still in the old ways of life that they used to live. Their body and their mind, their ways of life. And if you will look this and compare it with the present day's believer, you will find out that a lot of people, they are born again. But here it is, it's also shocking that believers that are born again, there are certain things that they still do. There are certain ways that they still think. And this is exactly what Paul the Apostle was trying to address in that book of Romans. And he says, you present your body. Hallelujah. You see, these believers, they are born again, but their body and their mind are not affected. What did I say? Their body and their mind are not affected. They still live the same way they live in the past. They live the same way they live in the world. So their bodies are not what? Are not affected by their, born, by their being born again. And this gives you a further understanding that the new birth, you know, yesterday I was talking about the new birth, and the new birth has nothing to do with your body, but it has to do with your spirit. Remember, I'm saying that when you get born again, it's your spirit that is reconnected back to God. It is not your body. Aha, uh -huh. are you getting my, my word again this morning? When you get born again, it is your spirit that is reconnected back to God. And it is not your body. It has nothing to do with your body. And Paul the Apostle is saying here that they need to present their body and their mind back to God. Hallelujah. When you get born again, when you got born again, your body did not get born again. Did you hear that? And you as an individual, you are the one to present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Did you get that point? You are the one. I am the one that we get my body. I get it what? I present it to God as a living sacrifice. Hear this because when I got born again, it was my spirit that God connected. This illustration just came to my mind now and I want to use that illustration quickly. Let's say I came into a room and there was no light in that room. And when I walked into the room, there was a lot of germs. The place was not in order. There was disorder. There was chaos in the room. Everything was misplaced. The chairs were turned upside down. And immediately I came into the room. I switched on the light. Aha. Uh -huh. I switched on the light. But the condition of the room was still messed up. That illustration just came to my mind. And I believe that that's the Holy Spirit that is bringing that again this morning. Hear this. So when I switch on the light, if I fail to put the rooms in order, the room is going to remain exactly the same way I met it. Can I say this? As the Holy Spirit is helping me this morning, will you switch on the light? That is, you're connected back to light. You're connected back to the source. But hear this. The room is still in a messy situation. So it is for you now to make sure that that room look presentable. Did you catch that now? The room look presentable. So as you switch on the light, everything that is not meant to be in the right, uh, direct, uh, right place, you do what? You begin to fix it one by one, one by one. So you present the room. You make it presentable. This is what the scripture is saying. You have to present your body. Hear this. Your spirit was reconnected back. Remember, I was talking about the spirit yesterday. Your spirit was reconnected back. But the body, your old body, is not connected back. It is something that you do gradually. Because there are habits that you have formed. There is a way that you live your life. There are some things that is not of God. There is a way also that you think. And you have to change your thinking pattern in order for your life to change. Am I really talking to somebody this morning? So you do that by renewing your mind on a daily basis. It is not something that God is going to do for you. Hey, let me say that again. 
It is not something that God, God did not help you to present yourself to him. You are the one that presents yourself to God. You are the one that presents your body as a sacrifice by disciplining your body. You are the one, according to the word of Paul, that says in the book of Romans 12, 1 to 2, you are to present. And this is what Paul is saying. He said, I beseech you by the mercy of God. I am pleading with you that giving your life to Christ is not enough, but transforming your life, getting your life back to shape, making sure that you are in the will of God, making sure that you are in the plan of God, making sure that you are in the purpose of God, making sure that your mind on a daily basis is renewed by the power of God. That is not something that God is going to do for you. Hallelujah. One of the main key for transformation has to do with the changing the way that you think. Can I say that again? One of the ways, one of the keys to transformation has to do with changing the ways that you think. Praise the Lord. God is not going to do that for you. You are the one that will renew your mind. That's what the scripture says, Romans 12 and verse 2. God is not going to help you to renew your mind. But as you present your body as a living sacrifice to God, and as you take charge of your thinking, you are the one that take charge of your thinking. Hallelujah. When you think about, uh, you have to think about uh, the way you live your life. You have to think about the thoughts that are not right. You have to think about the thoughts that are not pure and begin to approach them from your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know most often a time we believe that God has to change the circumstance, but here it is. We don't believe and we are not interested in changing the way we think. Praise God. Let me say that again so that it gets to you. Many a times you believe that, yes, God is going to change my circumstance. God is going to change my situation. God is going, yes, he has the power to change and do everything that is possible. But here it is. Your thinking must change. The way that you think about your situation, if God says he says yes, and you are thinking in the direction and dimension of no, there's no how you can get what God wants you to get. But here it is. God cannot change your circumstance until you change your thinking. Can I say that again? God cannot change your circumstance until you change your thinking. Your thinking has to be refreshed. Your thinking has to change. Your thinking pattern on a daily basis is something that has to be transformed by the power of God and the power of the word of God that you are hearing on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Hear this. If you want your circumstances to change, one of the greatest things that you need to do, begin to think according to the word of God. What did I say? Think according to the word of God. Make sure your thinking is in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. Hear this. Your thoughts control your life. What did I say? Your thoughts control your life. And if your thinking is not right, your life cannot be right. And this is why Paul the Apostle is saying, I beseech you by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God. Let me say this to you. Every, every action, every single action that you take every day is as a result of your thought. Can I say that again? Every single action that you take on a daily basis is as a result of your thought. If your thought is not going in that direction, your life cannot go in the direction of your thinking. Whatever you are thinking, that is the way your, your, your life go. In the direction of your thinking. Yes, your life will go in the direction of your thinking. Of your thinking. Hear this. If you don't think it, you can't do it. Hallelujah. If that is in your thought, that is exactly what you are going to do. Am I talking to somebody? If it's in your thought, that is what you are going to do. Hallelujah. If you don't think it, I'm saying it again, you cannot have it. If you don't think it, you cannot have it. You see, the people that are alcohol, their patterns of their thoughts force us to change. Am I talking to somebody? The people that flex, the people that humanize, uh -huh, the people that engage in promiscuous acts, uh, act, 
there is in their thought. It start with a thought. It start with a thought. And before you know it, it move gradually from their thought into the position of action. If it's not in your thought, then it cannot be something that you will act. And this is why on a daily basis, dare to refresh your mind. What did I say? Dare to refresh your mind. Every day, make sure that it's part of your lifestyle. Anything that is not of God, don't think about it. Anything that is not in the plan of God, don't think about it. And this is why Paul says, by the mercies of God, I beseech you. I beseech you. Hear this. Hear this again. Your thought can set limits on your life. You know, at times preachers preach this. At times people hear this, but they never sit down to think about it. Your thought can set a limit on your life. Hallelujah. And until that limit that you set on your life is broken, your life cannot go further. Can I say that again? Your thinking can set a limit on your life. And until that limit is taken out, or until the limit is broken, you'll find out that your life cannot go further. And this is the truth of the word of God. Shout hallelujah, somebody. I'm going to connect it with yesterday's message. I'm only laying a foundation because I want this to be so clear to you so that you have a clear understanding of what you are hearing so that you are not just hearing the word of God and look it at one of the scriptures that you know already. One of the things that we need as believers is understanding. When you understand a word, there's no how your life will not benefit from it and there's no how you will not experience the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Let's look quickly in the book of Proverbs 4 and verse 23 again this morning before we go and pray. Proverbs, 20, Proverbs 4 and verse 23. Hear this. It said, keep your heart. Note that. Keep your heart with all diligence. From it flows the springs of life. Why will the scripture say this is a man of experience writing here? And he's saying, keep your heart. With all diligence, out of it flow the springs of life. Why will he say that? Hallelujah. I want to say this again to you this morning. You see, the word art used here is not the organs in your body pumping blood. You know, I was saying that yesterday, that often a time when we talk about art, it's not talking about, about your organs in your body. It's your spirit man. It's your spirit man. So get that very clearly this morning. Keep your heart. It's not talking about the organs in your body that is pumping the blood in every part of your body. No, 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 no. That's not what he's talking about. It's talking about your spirit man. Remember, I said to you yesterday, your spirit man is that which was connected back to God. It's not your body. Your spirit man, again, is that which goes back to God. After you finish your race here, your spirit man goes back to God. You see, every organ of your body is buried here. It does not go with you. When somebody dies, it's the spirit man that returns back to God. It's not the body. Your body does not return back to God. Hallelujah, somebody. So here, what the what Paul Apostle was talking, it's not saying guide your heart. It's not saying your heart as the organs in your body. It's talking about your spirit man, 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 your spirit man. Hallelujah. Once your spirit man is guided, is guided, you will find out that things about your life begin to change from time to time. It's not the organs in your body, but it has got to do with what? It has got to do with your spirit man. Your spirit man is what needs to be guided. Your spirit man, nobody can see it, but it's there. Your spirit man, like I mentioned yesterday, cannot be seen by any estuary. Your spirit man cannot be seen under any machine. Your spirit man is the spirit of God that is inside of you, that was reconnected back to God when you gave your life to Christ. And the scripture says, we have to guide that spirit man with all diligence. 
with all diligence. So you must be careful what you are thinking about. You must be careful what you are hearing. You must be uh, careful as you hear the word of God, make sure that you begin to think about the things that you are hearing, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I happened to have a friend. And this friend of mine, she, uh, uh, this friend of mine, she will say to you, she think about something is wrong. She think about something is bad. And immediately she's thinking about it, that thing will happen. She will say, I just thought about it now and it happened. I just thought about that, it happened. And everything that she's thinking about is something that is negative. Everything that she's thinking about is something that is bad. Everything that she's thinking about is not something that is good. And she continuously, she will say, so one day, I got to my, I was just talking to my mom. And I said, I call her name because my mother knew her very well. I said, this person every time will say this and that thing will happen. Before you know it, all bad things that she's saying, all bad things that, that she says she's thinking, is coming to pass. And my mom said, you have to cut off from that person. And from that minute, I cut off. Then I was still a baby Christian. I didn't understand the things of God. I'm still a baby in the Lord. I'm still growing. I didn't understand those things. And I cut off from her completely. And she knew that I cut off from her. Hear me and hear me very well. Anytime you are thinking about anything that is bad and it's happening, you are operating as a witch already. Am I talking to somebody? Let me say this. A lot of people don't know that. Anytime you think about something bad and it's happening, that is the beginning of witchcraft. You are beginning to operate as a witch. Can I say this to you? Most of the witches, they don't really fly like you think that they fly. That is imagination. You know, in your imagination, you have this imaginary uh, view about witches that they have to fly. You have this imaginary view about devil that he has to have two horns in his head. You have this imaginary view about devil that he has to be black. Am I talking to somebody? So one of the gateways of the enemies into your life is your mind. And one of the gateways of the powers of the gate of Hades into your life is your mind. So what they do, they try as much as possible and bring something that contradicts the plan and the word of God. They flash it in your torch. Am I talking to somebody? You see, when Jesus was speaking to the devil, the devil wasn't standing right in front of them, uh, in Jesus. A lot of people didn't know that. The devil was not standing. He came in the form of torch. And let me say this. When the devil wants to destroy your life, it comes in the form of torch. Can I pray for you this morning? By the power of the blood and the name of Jesus, every thought that is not of God, that the devil has already presented to you in order to destroy your destiny, in order to destroy your life. Today, we mess up those plans. We mess up those thoughts. We approach it from the root in the name of Jesus. We set you free by the power and the name of Jesus. This morning, I set you free in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you must be awake. You must be alert. When any thought comes into your mind, because hear this, the devil negotiates your life with you. The devil negotiate the life of your children with you. The devil negotiate with you by your thought. Am I talking to somebody? Let me say that again. The devil will always negotiate your life with you by your thought. I want to say it again, and I want you to get it clearly this morning. I said the devil will always negotiate through your thought, through your thought, through your thought. Your thought or your thinking is the doorway for the devil to come in. So he will bring it. If he wants you to flex, he bring it first as a, as a, as a, as a thought, a flash, and you get it. You are thinking. Before you know it, you are in bed with that person. Before you know it, that thing which we said you don't want to do, you are doing it. Before you know it, exactly what you are thinking. You know, like that friend of mine that I was just, um, I shared with you this morning. She will just say it. She will say some bad things. She will say some nasty things. And before you know it, it will happen. And those days, there are certain people as well that it should target. It will say to you, you see that bad manager, 
I'm going to get to that manager. And if we get to them, he will say it as jokingly as a, as, as a play. And before you know it, you see that that which he's saying, that's exactly what is happening. And if care is not taken, if you don't shut your heart, if you don't shut the door of your heart, when the devil brings a thought to you, you find out that he will operate according to that which you are thinking. Hallelujah. Do you know that your thought has the power to shape your life? Can I say that again? Your thought, our thought, has the power to shape our life. Hallelujah. I'm not, I want to say it to you again. Remember, your spirit man is the one that is born again. Your spirit man is the, is the spirit of God, the breath of God that is in you. So if you fail to use it in a positive way, whatever you are using it for, it will happen to you. And this is why we, you may come to the place of prayer. Some people go to the place of prayer. They pray, they pray, they pray, they pray, they pray, they pray, they pray. They pray. But their thinking is not changing. Am I talking to you? Their thinking is not changing. Some people come to the place of prayer. They pray, they pray, they pray, they pray. But in their thought, they are still thinking. It's not possible. I can't have it. Oh, no, it can't, uh, it can't happen. How can it happen just like that? No, prayer cannot do it. No, prayer cannot do it. What is the devil fighting? The devil is fighting, is fighting you through your thought. What did I say? Through your thought. So continuously, it will bring some things and it will bring it in a subtle way through your thought. And once you are able to deliberate on it again and again, it will say to you, this one is not good. That one is the one that is good. What is it doing at that point? It's trying as much as possible to gain entrance into your life. Once it gain entrance into your life, let's, let's look at this. You see, fathers that sleep with their children, it didn't just start in a day. It started with their thought. Am I talking to somebody? It started with their thought. They first, you know, digested. They were thinking about it. They didn't just wake up as a madman, carry their daughter and start sleeping with their daughter. No, it started with thinking. They began to look at that daughter. This daughter is so attractive. Oh, wow. This daughter is so attractive. And before you know it, the devil lured them. And before you know it, if they go into the action. You see, at times for some people, it can take a year. At times for some people, some things can take a month. At times for some people, immediately, as they are thinking about it, you find out that the devil has captivated their mind. He has gained control. He has engaged them. Before you know it, the action. Some people, you see, they steal. Before they steal, it's not something they just wake up and they say, I'm going to start sleep, uh, uh, stealing. No, 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 no. It started as a thought. What did I say? It started as a thought. And because the thought was not controlled, the thought was not strong, the thought was not caution, the thought you didn't put the word of God in order to weigh it and say, no, 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 no. This is what the word of God said. I'm going to do exactly what the word of God says. Before you know it, because that thought, the more it comes, look at my hands, it comes like that. And it's, you are thinking about it. You are thinking about it. And before you come, you see, just like that, you are falling prey of the enemy. Can I pray for you this morning in any way that your thought wants you to fall the prey of the devil? I come by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance into your life. I speak deliverance into your life. I speak deliverance into your mind. I speak deliverance into your spirit. I speak deliverance into your will. I speak deliverance into your emotion. I speak deliverance by the power of the blood of Jesus that the Lord God Almighty will back up your torture from today. You will think about the things that are true. You will think about the things that are pure. You will think about the things that are holy. You will think about the things that are of God in the name of Jesus. 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 You see the people that lie also. It started with their thought. The secretary that sleep with his boss. Starts with the thought. Am I talking to somebody? Gradually. The secretary. You find out that the, the boss. Always maybe talk or share some things. And is thinking wow. Wow. Wow, 
hey, if this man also, if I would be able to eat out of it. So he's doing everything. So by the time you see, it, there, there's a way that she begins to dress. She dressed in order to do what? To capture the mind of the boss. And before you know it, the boss fall a prey. If you, if when he's serving tea, he's presenting the tea. He presents the tea in a way that the boss begins to look and say, wow. Hey, look at the way this girl is presenting things. The way she does her hair, when she's talking, suddenly she just changed the way she's talking. And the boss, what, what happened? The boss mind is what? The boss mind is captured. Before you know it, the boss is going to bed with them. Everything in life about your life did not just start. It starts with your thought. Am I talking to somebody? That wicked art started with your thought. Remember, this is why Paul the Apostle said, by the mercies of God, I beseech you, I beseech you to present your body. Remember, I said, it is not God that is going to help you to present your body. You must be able to present your body. You must be able to lay it down as a sacrifice before God. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing this morning. You, that man that is hearing me, there is already a trap in front of you. And you must get out of that trap for the Lord, not uh, for the enemy not to destroy you. I'm saying it again. You, that brother watching me this morning, there is, there is, there is a trap. There is a trap already set for you. The, the way to get out of that tra trap is for you to renew your mind this morning so that you don't fall into that sin and regret it because the enemy has planned a way for you to be destroyed. You must make up your mind. Hear me and hear me very well. Some people will say, it's just five minutes enjoyment, but do you know that five minutes enjoyment can land you in hell? What did I say? Five minutes enjoyment can land you in hell and five minutes enjoyment can give you victory. It's my prayer for you again this morning. As you hear the sound of my voice, that the Lord give you victory over adversary that wants to come into your life through your thought this morning. I pray for you that my God set you free in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to stop there this morning. But I want you to know the importance of your thought. I want you to know that your thought has a power. As power, and this is why you must continuously renew your mind as you give your as you give your life to Christ. You don't stop at the point of giving your life to Christ. You move further. How do you move further? You move further by studying the word of God. You move further by living according to the word of God, not just the hearer of the word of God. And as you begin to do this, your life begins to transform. Remember, I said you can operate as a witcher. Through, through your church, if care is not taken, what you are thinking about, and you find out that the evil things that you are thinking about and the wicked things that you are thinking about happen exactly and immediately, then it means we are beginning to operate as a witch gradually. And I pray for you, every old of witchcraft through your life today is broken in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's quickly go again to the book of Psalm this morning. As we read, Psalm 102, and I'm going to be fast with this this morning because there are prayer points that we need to pray this morning. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me. In the days of my distress, incline your ears to me. Answer me speedily in the days when I call, for my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burned with furnace. My heart is struck down like grass, as wither. I forgot to eat my bread because my loud groaning, my bone cling to my flesh. I am like a desert, all in the wilderness, like an all in the waste places. I lie, I wake. I am like a lowly sparrow on the outstone. All day my enemy taunts me. Those who deride me use my name for a cause. For I ate ashes like a bread. I mingle tears with my drink because of your indignation and anger. For you have taken me up, thrown me down. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like a grass. But you, O oh Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generation. You will all arise and have pity on Zion in the time of to favor us. The appointed time has come for your servant. Hold our stones there and have pity on our doors. Nation will fear the names of the Lord and all kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. 
He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise at their prayer. Let this be recorded for generations to come so that people yet to be created may praise the Lord that he looks down from the holy eye. From heavens, the Lord look at the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to set those who are doomed to death and that they may decline in Zion, declare in Zion the name of the Lord. In Jerusalem is praise. When people gather together, the kingdom to worship the Lord, he has broken my strength and my scores. He has shortened my days. Oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days. Your worsen yes endure throughout generation. Uphold you lay the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hand. They will perish, but you will remain. They will wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are same and your years are no end. The children of your servant shall dwell securely. Their offspring shall be established before you. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are carrying me this morning and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I remove my life from anything that caused me to think the way I'm not able, I'm not supposed to be thinking. Say, today I remove myself. I remove myself from whatsoever caused me to think in the way that I'm not meant to be thinking. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to talk to your father. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. Every thought that is limiting you, I want you to cry out that you break free through it today. Say, I break through. Say, I break free. Say, I break free. Say, I break free. I break free. I break free. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. Say, every torture that is not of God. Say, today, I break free from him. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. Every thought that is not of God, I want you to decree. I want you to declare, I break free. 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 I want you to also pray for your children that they will break free from thoughts that is not of God. 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 I want you to lift up your voice up and I want you to decree and I want you to declare that today, I break free of any thought that is not of God. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. There is deliverance in this meeting this morning. There is deliverance in this meeting this morning. The Lord wants to deliver you. Yes, from that thought. He wants to deliver you. You are so caged with that thought. You are so caged. You have been trying everything and it's not working. After this service, I want you to call me. I want to have the personal word with you so that today you can be free. In the name of Jesus, you have been struggling with your torture and it's not working. You have been struggling. You have tried everything, but it's still not going. I want you to come. I want to pray with you. And I'm praying with some of you online, but you have this strong pattern of thinking about something that is devilish. The Lord wants to deliver you because it's the ends of the wicked upon your life to destroy you. But this morning, I stand in agreement with you and I decree and declare that you are set free. I say you are set free. I say you are set free by the power of the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want you to take this prayer point again. Say, Father, every torture of that the devil is using to put me in the same spot. Say, today, by the message of God, I break away from me. I want you to say it. Every, every thought, evil thought, Lord, that the devil is using to put me, to catch me in the same spot. Say, today, I break free from it. I break free from it. I break it from me. I break free from me. I hear it so clear. I hear it so clearly. Magali broka gada. Elege gedo kutu li braga. Enanga tuku li broka gado shiga. Enanga da bo shaga la brogaga. There is a thought that keep coming again and again. I pray for you today that the devil used to put you in the sense thought. Break free from me today. 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 By the mercies of God, I pray for you. Break free from me. Break free from me. Break free from me. 
break free from me by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray again. You, that sister, say every door that the enemy is using to come into my thought. So I shut the door this morning. Say, I shut the door this morning. Every door that the devil is using to come into my thought. I am my pastor that the devil is bringing. Say, today, I shut the door. 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 The past that the devil is playing in my front uh, that caused me to think uh, about the things that are not pure, about the things that are not true. Say today, I shut the door. I shut the door. I want you to break that door. I want you to break that prayer. I want you to break that prayer. Say, I shut the door. 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 The door that the devil is using to get to you, to get to you. Say this morning. I shot that door. 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 I want you to lift up your voice. The hand of God is healing somebody in your left side under your breast. There's this sharp pain. I love Tony Braga. The power of God is healing you now. Out of that pain. Out of that pain. Out of that pain. I cause the root 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 of that pain. By the power of the blood and the name of Jesus, I command the pain to cease in the name of Jesus. That pain in your chest, that pain under your left breast, by the power of the blood, I release anointing for healing this morning. I release it. Anointing for healing. 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 In that left breast, right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the power in the blood of Jesus. I command Nena to Calibro Gaga. I say you are healed now by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, quickly take this prayer quickly. Say, Father, answer me speedily. In Nakoto Calibro Gagada, Magana Godoko Ribra Gaga, Regge, there are certain things that God must do this week, this month. I want you to cry out to God. This year, there are certain things that God must do for you. Say, Father, hear me speedily. Magana Godoko, Eketo Calibro Gaga. Raganda Karuske Libraga, Negagagagaga. I want you to cry out. Say, Father, answer me speedily. 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 Don't just say, Answer me speedily. I want you to mention that thing that you want God to answer you speedily. Anangadanga, Magali Brogagada, Regale Mada Roshiga. The angels of God at work again this morning. Magaluko Tali Brogagadusha. Libruga Rosha, Negagagagaga, I pray for you. Ananda Koto Calibro Gaga, there is a speedy answer this morning. There is a speedy answer this morning. There is a speedy answer this morning for that favor that you have asked for. Yes, 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 for that breakthrough that you have asked for, for that blessing that you have asked for. There is a speedy answer. There is a speedy answer. There is a speedy answer. Rekato Calibro Gaga, Negagagaga, the angels of God. Receive your pastor now. Receive your favor now. Receive your healing now. Receive your deliverance now. Receive your status now. Hey, Magagada. Somebody's status is changing this morning by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I command you to go forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Irina Nukoto Calibra. Somebody under the sound of my voice. You have this, you have this dream. You saw yourself lying between two people and in the pool of blood. I pray for you by the power of the blood of Jesus. I release you from that accident. 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 I release you by the power of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, by the power of the Lord. Every power that I can govern to kill you through accident, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I cancel it. I cancel it. That accident, I cancel by the power of the Lord. I cancel. 
I cancel, I cancel, I cancel, I cancel, I cancel, I cancel. In the name of Jesus, whatever is accident before you, I brought it out by the power of the blood of Jesus. I brought it out. I brought it out. I want you to quickly take this prayer point. Say, I will not die suddenly. I want you to pray. I, I will not die suddenly. I want you to pray wherever you are hearing me. Say, I will not die suddenly. My children will not die suddenly. I will not die suddenly. I want you to pray that prayer. I will not die suddenly. My children will not die suddenly. My grandchildren will not die suddenly. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to pray that prayer. In the next one minute, I want you to lift up your voice and say, I will not die suddenly. I will not die suddenly. My children will not die suddenly. My husband will not die suddenly. Magana go go go. In Nagando Calibra Gagada. Regede Magarosa. Etoka Libro Gagada. Magando Calibro Gagada. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to decree as well. Say you secure the destiny of your children. Say from this day, I secure the destiny of my children. My children will be established. I want you to pray. The future of my children is established. This secure. The future of my grandchildren is established. It's secure. They will not die suddenly. They are established. I am Nagada. Begin to anoint yourself, but anoint yourself, anoint your children, anoint yourself. Say, I will not die suddenly. The future of my children is secure. The future, the future of my children, my future is secure. I am established before God. I am established in the presence of God. I join my faith with you again this morning by the power and the message of God. Hey, hey, manana I cancel that miscarriage. Oh, Jesus, I cancel that miscarriage. 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 Whatever God does is perfect. So by the power of the blood, by the name of Jesus, I secure the destiny of your children. I secure your destiny. I come against any calamity. I come against any trouble. I come against evil gang up. I speak over your life. No accident, no incident. You will not be in any pool of the blood of your enemy. Suddenly you will not die. Suddenly evil will not befall you. Suddenly evil will not capture your life. Suddenly evil will not put you down. Suddenly your life will not be distorted. Suddenly you will not be buried. Suddenly you will not be missing. Suddenly you will not disappear from your family. In the name of Jesus, I cover you by the blood. I cover you by the blood. I rescue you from the grip of the mouth of the wicked one. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Go in this power and in this mouth. Do well, do greatly. In the name of Jesus, be divinely protected under the auction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Stay under cover throughout the days of your life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. And all the saints of God again this morning will say, Amen. Hallelujah. Before we go again this morning, I want you to give out of the substance that God has given to you. As those prophetic words are coming, I want you to key into it. I want you to hold on to it. Tomorrow, Thursday, remember in the evening power of prayer, we'll be dealing with some issue. I want you to do me a favor. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I want you to be part of the laborers. 
that will bring people into the kingdom of God. Don't keep this news to yourself, what God is doing. Spread it. Spread it to other people, and it shall be well with you. Out of the source time that God has given to you again this morning, I want you to give, I want you to give, I want you to give your offering, your tithe. I want you to give your seed. I want you to key into the word of God. I want you to do as God is instructing you that you don't hold back. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Until I come your way again, remember tonight we have Bible study. And I want you to be part of our Bible study again tonight. We have excellent teachers. Excellent teachers. I'm also learning from those teaching. So key into it by joining us on Zoom. 2942062061511. I say it again. That's the number 2942061511. Key into it. Come to our Bible study tonight and it shall be well with you. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that God is with you. You are not alone and you are covered by the precious blood of the Lamb and no wickedness or evil will be able to befall you in the name of Jesus. God bless you.